What's going on, everybody? Judd Burden here with Asphalt Kingdom, and I am here with a, with an awesome dude that I'm looking to really dig into here and really, you know, kind of go through this journey of what we call building your empire in the asphalt maintenance world. And I know that Bob probably has a ton of ton of value to deliver here, and I'm excited to share this through our platform. Uh, Bob, man, welcome, welcome. Thank you. Thanks for having me. So you started a company called Rock County Seal Co. Yep. Yep. Fantastic. And and you're in Wisconsin. Yep. Southern Wisconsin, just a little north of the Wisconsin, Illinois border. Right on, man. Well, welcome. And thank you so much for taking the time out of your busy schedule. I know it's it's estimate and proposal time right now. You're probably you've probably got stuff right on your desk right there, getting ready to getting ready <laughs> to convert. So thank you for doing this for everybody, man. Yeah, yeah, of course. So let's 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 dig in. I mean, I, you know, this industry is something that I'm super super passionate about and I really, you know, the mission here is to share as much as we can to pay it forward and really just help help to improve the industry as a whole. And so if there's certain things that we've gone through in our life that have been these big lear learning curves and potentially things that could be a bit of a, a booby trap, as we can say, um, then let's try and help people to not fall into those booby traps and potentially uh, give off a representation of the industry that could be not one that we're all looking to build towards, which is improvement and something that's attractive for new hires and attractive for property owners and managers when we're quoting. So why don't you take us back, man? Take us back to kind of, you know, where you come from and how how and why asphalt maintenance? Sure. Well, uh, I'm here in Janesville, Wisconsin. It's where I was born. Uh, when I was in high school, I think I was 16. I just got hired on at a local seal coat company. It was called Cash Canon Seal Coat. I was labor. I bu carried buckets around, broomed edges, did prep work, all that stuff for uh, about two years, and then or two seasons. And then, uh, <clears throat> starting into the third season, he, the owner, needed some some money to buy another truck and trailer. Uh, so I partnered up with him and uh, gave him money and got a quarter of the company in return for five years and yeah at the at the end of the fifth year or the end of the fourth year going into the fifth year he said ah, i'm i'm done i'm gonna shutter the company and i'm gonna go do other things you know i want something i can do year round and that's not so physically uh demanding um but the contract i signed was very very bad for me if that happened because i was gonna you know lose all my investment that i was supposed to get back at the end of the fifth year so that's why asphalt maintenance for me i purchased the after a lot of negotiating back and forth i picked up the equipment from them the truck the trailer the backpack blowers the weed whackers the billy goat and uh just kept things going so i went so basically i saved myself from a bad situation and I changed the company name to Rock County Seal Coat and been going ever since. This will be my fourth year uh, as Rock County Seal Coat. Fourth year. How old are you, if you don't mind me asking, Bob? I'm 26. I love that. I love that. That makes my heart sing, brother. So I want to know, I want to know something, though, because a lot of people, when they'd be presented with adversity and challenge in a situation like that, where you were kind of in that moment, I'm sure it felt like you hit a wall, like how could this have happened to me, you know, um, and now what the hell am I going to do? And, you know, a lot of people in those kind of situations were, would curl up into a fetal position and throw in the towel. What was it inside you? What was it that, that really drove you to find a solution to that? What was, what was the, what was the solution that you, that you found to really make that win? Mm -hmm. Well, I think it was self-preservation a little bit. Uh, you know, I didn't, I didn't want to lose out. Didn't want to lose. I knew the money that was there to be made in in the industry because I'd been doing it for a while. Uh, I'd given quotes for a year for the company, and so I'd I'd kind of done everything. So I knew I was going to be all right uh, if I took that leap. Uh, but the the first two years when I was doing or started Rock County Seal Coat, I still had a full time job. Um, so I brought her to my boss, who was you know kind of my mentor at the time when it happened, and. I showed him the contract I signed and he goes, Oh yeah, you don't own any of the company assets. You own a quarter of the name and that's it. So if I were you, I'd just try to try to pick up the equipment for cheap and make your money back that way. So decided to do that and 
yeah, I'm very grateful for him t- t- helping me out with that and kind of walking me through the steps there. So that was very helpful. Would you say that it's been very, and I know you just said it, but I want, I want to reiterate this to the audience, which is having a mentor, how important is that to you? Oh, very, very. Yeah. Any big decisions, uh, you know, big purchases or strategy, marketing, all that stuff I can, can run by him. And, you know, he's been his own boss, owned his own business for over 30 years. So he's gone through it. So it's, it's very, very helpful. Yeah. You know, I try to, I try to share that message to a lot of, a lot of people that I communicate with actually most of the people I communicate with, which is surround yourself with extremely positive people who have the track record of success. Don't get distracted by the noise and the things that go on around. I call it kind of the fat. You don't, don't get distracted by, by people who might not have a track record of success or, or not some, perhaps somebody that you don't inspire to be, aspire to be. You want to you wanna really, really move forward in a direction I want to move forward in a direction that makes sense for you and your business and what you're looking to achieve in your life. And if, if that aligns with other people that you surround yourself with, then you kind of end up in a situation where success becomes inevitable. So I'd love to hear from you how you've grown from the time that you started your very own business, owning all of your business and really you know, moving in a direction of scaling and growth. Why don't you bring us back to that day where you are now, you know, Rock County Seal Coat and you're starting day one. Take us back there and take us to where you are now and what's lying ahead for you. Sure. I remember my first day very clearly because we, we squeegee all of our material on and I was never a squeegee guy at the old company. I was a bucket guy and an edger. So I had no idea how to squeegee. Uh, so I brought my buddy with me and one of our other buddies, little brothers to help. And uh, my one buddy was the squeegee guy for the company. So I said, you got to come out and you got to teach me how to squeegee because this is a real thing now. So the first day was learning how to squeegee. I think we put four or five driveways on the schedule. And yeah, it was brutally hot that first day. We, you know, we were lugging buckets around. There's no pressurized hose to move materials, just gravity feed and man, we, we got our butts kicked that first day, but, uh, yeah, it was, it was good. A lot of it was uh, word of mouth. I put up a little, some advertisements in these mobile home communities that have, you know, little $250 driveways all over the place, knocked out a bunch of those and had some customers from the, from the old business that the old owner kind of gave them my phone number. But yeah, I think year one, we did about 60,000 in sales. And then um, the next year, I I still had a full-time job. So I was sending guys out when I was at work and that was 2020. Um, And at the end of that year, my boss said, Hey, you know, this is, this is taking up a lot of your time. You know, you're, you're here till, till after we're done working and you're planning out your schedule for the next day and all that stuff. You know, I think it's time you just, you decide which one you want to do. Do you want to work here? or Do you want to do seal coding? So I came in the next day and just said, no, I feel confident in this. This is where I want to go. And I quit that job. And so last year was the first full year where I was on my own, uh, no, no other job. And we did last year, we did about, about 250,000 in sales. Um, so it's been good. It's been good. I sent out a letter this year to all my customers from 2020 and I picked up about 70 driveways off those letters. So you now we're booked out for six or seven weeks right now. So it's, it's, it's a good feeling going into the season this year with that much work lined up. I mean, it's not a ton of work, but it's a lot more than I started with last year. So I feel some good momentum in, in our direction. And what's, what's the goal for this year? What are you, what are you looking to achieve sales wise, revenue wise this year? Uh, about 450 is where I'd like to be at. Man, you know, I, I sit here and I smile to that because, you know, a lot of companies that are out there today, they're, they're excited about 5% growth. And I'm like, no, don't be excited about 5% growth. Be excited about 50% growth. Be excited about yeah. 75% growth. And I'm just like, 
If you're setting up a plan to only grow 5% and you're excited about that, who boy, your competition is going to go flying by you because there's guys like you and I that are setting 50 plus percent goals. And so, you know, that's, that's exciting for me to hear, man. And, and congratulations that you're moving towards that track record. So basically by 20, by season 2024, you'll have a million dollar company. That is the goal. Congratulations. And by the way, and as you know, asphalt in the asphalt maintenance world, the margins are incredible. You know, I hear a lot of people speaking about, and these are business owners that are really working in their business. They're not working on their business. And I hear a lot of these business owners working in their business, complaining about material costs and complaining about the guys that undercut and complaining about so many different things. And I sit here and I kind of reflect on on the time that's involved with doing all of that versus the time that's involved with really delivering a unique value proposition around problem solving and over delivering on the value and having proper communication skills and proper face of your business, having your marketing tuned like a fine tuned pencil tip. And like if, if people, if people who are stuck in the rut about all the reasons why they can't do it, and they focused on all the reasons why they could do it, all of a sudden they wouldn't be talking about the guys that are charging eight cents a square foot or nine cents a square foot. We'd be setting industry standards that were better than that because instead of investing all of this complaining dark energy into the industry, we'd be able to inject positivity and strength and help teach people and help bring people together so that we don't, we don't teach about the eight cents a square foot, but in, and attack it, but instead teach how to increase your margins. And then at that point, let's let the best marketers and the salespeople win. Let the people who truly can communicate proper proposals and being able to deliver that kind of that layout of what their standard operating procedures are and the job process. And, you know, like for, for me, Bob, I think there's there's just there's two ways about going about building a business. Two. The right way and the wrong way. <laughs> and and the fact that we're sitting here right now doing this and for anybody that's watching right now do it right. Just be professional. So tell me a little bit about your branding and your marketing and I'm looking at your website right here in the background like the face of your business from a marketing standpoint. Tell us a little bit about that and you know, how hard it was for you to get your, your, you know, your website, your social media and, and those pieces together. Tell us about that. Sure. Well, I think I definitely have room for improvement in, in those areas for sure. And I'm, I know that and I'm working on it, but uh, my original website, I had a friend build for me, um, pretty basic website, 2019 um, last year. And I kept that for two years last year. I, I hired thrive and you probably heard of them. They're you know, big uh, marketing and they have their online portal to run all your invoices, customer data through. Uh, they built me a new website. Um, wasn't really thrilled with them. Just their, they're just such a big company, you know, is all the stuff they're putting out on social media is just this cookie cutter uh, posts. And my followers kind of felt like it was spam. So I got rid of them and hired a local company to do my website. My, they're doing my SEO uh, this year, my Google, my business, the links to send to customers to ask for a positive review once we're done. Um, so I think all those things are going to help, but yeah, I think for sure I can definitely work on my branding and, you know, I, the logo I have now is still the same one I started with. So, uh, I could probably do, do better on that. Um, but yeah, <clears throat> uh, besides that I run Facebook ads, I've been doing that for a while. Uh, get You get pretty good bang for your buck doing that. Uh, I'm going to be trying out Google ads this year with the company that I hired. I'll have them run those. So yeah, hopefully that has a positive benefit to us this year. Cool, man. It's, it's such an important piece of it, right? And I say that I say this often, we have the AK round table every Wednesday at 7 p.m. That's been a real hit. Last night, we had like 26 people on live on camera. Oh. And we're interacting and engaging. And the thing is just growing like mad. Um, the AK round tables is, is something where we there's no charge. It's free. We get together and we come in as kind of a, you know, a brotherhood, a fraternity almost. And you're coming in and you're working together to really improve and build and and we hold each other accountable. And so every week there's something that we walk away with. And 
and the face of our, like the marketing piece, this digital footprint of your business. You know, when I'm looking at you right now and when I'm communicating with you, the face of your business needs to represent what it is that you stand for, what it is that you truly, truly are all about. And so when it comes down to the face of your business, which is marketing, you know, marketing is, is that piece that is so important to tune because it's where new customers find you. It's where potential customers might be in that conversion cycle right now in the deal pipeline. You might have an estimate out and they're going to check you out, man. They're going to check your personal profile on Facebook. They're going to check you out on LinkedIn, on Instagram. They're going to check your business out. They're going to check your Google My Business. They're going to check your website. And if they're not all in harmony with what it is that you've presented and communicated with them regarding the proposal and or in person, if that doesn't match up, there's a good chance that you're going to lose that conversion because they don't align. So never let a web design company or a company that's that's got your digital presence in your and your footprint in the palm of their hands, that's in the palm of your hands. And make sure that you're communicating so effectively with that company so that they can speak your language because you've got your own language and then the industry has its language. So tying that, those two languages together and then sharing that with a company that's gonna really, um, really blow up your digital presence, so to speak, is such a crucial part of that. That's like one of the most important pieces of advice. The second thing is that the sales process that you work is so crucial. So a lot of people use like a Google sheet or people will use nothing. Uh, a scratch pad that might be in a truck tucked under a seat, but like yeah. you're, you're, the, the reason why you have a digital presence for your business is to help convert deals, but also create more leads, generate more leads. And those leads are called marketing qualified leads. When they come into your pipeline, you need to make sure that the sales process, once that lead comes in, is a fine tuned process. So are you taking it from a marketing qualified lead to a sales qualified lead where you're interacting and engaging with them in a, in a personal manner to then moving to an opportunity stage where it's now I'm getting the estimate and proposal out to now moving to the next stage, which is one deal, like we wanted, closed deal, signed contract, collected money, or lost, not lost. And then what I call the repeat, right? The repeat business that you'll get out of that if it's closed one. If you're not measuring those stages, of what I call the deal pipeline, then you end up in a situation where you don't really know. And so this is a question I would ask everybody right now who's watching, including yourself, to, to really think about this. If you don't know the number of leads that you're generating online right now, you need to know. The next thing is you need to know from those leads how many you actually communicate with that becomes a sales qualified lead, somebody that actually is somebody that would consider doing business with you. And knowing that conversion rate from MQL to the SQL is crucial. 100 leads and you only get 20 sales qualified leads, that's a 20% conversion. Now, out of those 20 sales qualified leads, if you only get 10% as an opportunity for estimate, then you've got two of those 20 that are now an opportunity that gets the proposal. Now, if you your conversion rate is 50% conversion rate to go to the closed one, it means you get one deal from the total 100 leads. So it's really important to be able to measure that because when it comes down to you paying a company or doing your AdWords and doing these different pieces of your business, if you don't have a clear understanding of that, then how are you really gonna have a pulse on where you could potentially glow, go, potentially go and glow um, <laughs> if you actually put fuel on the fire to generate even more leads. You need to have that, you know, somebody who says, I want to spend $2,000 a month on Google AdWords because you better have your, you better have your measurement tools set up and your conversion cycles set up. Otherwise you're kind of throwing money in the wind. Probably we'll get results because our industry is awesome, but not the same kind of real scalable managed business that that you really want and so that's some advice for you and everybody watching yeah i definitely need to work on that and i'll tell you hubspot is awesome hubspot okay. is awesome for that platform it's an incredible sales platform that allows you to really review your deal pipelines 
The other thing too, I'm going to totally give a plug on this because we developed it. It's called Paveman Pro. And the Paveman Pro system allows you to push out professional proposals in minutes, but you also have all your customers' account information. You've got your tasks. You've got your goal setting. It talks about your conversion rates. It literally will give you what I spoke about through that deal pipeline that allows you to really have more of a pulse on your business. And I think, I think keeping your business organized and performing is so important, you know? Definitely. So what's, uh, what's the, what's on the scoop right now? What's the, what's the biggest job? What's the biggest target that you want to accomplish this year? What's the biggest, the biggest job? Uh, well, I have my biggest job ever on the schedule right now. It's a 350,000 square foot church. Yeah. So it was two years ago, we sealed one of the pastor's driveways and he asked us if we did uh, commercial work. So he was my in and I followed up with him last year. Didn't hear anything back, followed up with them in the spring. Um, and the maintenance guy or the facilities manager reached out to me and said, yeah, let's do it. Is there any discount if we pay you now? So like, well, I mean, I was able to wow. buy. Yeah. So I was able to buy, you know, for you know, six pallets of crack filler at last year's pricing. And then I just passed that savings onto them and gave them the whatever, three, 400 bucks a pallet savings. And then they paid me up front for it. So, so yeah, I, I'm going to rent a squeegee machine for that one. Uh, never used one before, but uh, we will, we will figure it out. I'm going to have a, or a drop trailer set there so we can fill up right on the job site. And yeah. That is, that is awesome. Definitely connect with Jake Abernathy. There might be, might be a, something to help there. Just a heads up. Okay. He's an awesome human being. He's like a brother, brother from another mother. He's a great guy, Dr. Asphalt. Um, well, that's incredible, man. Congratulations on that huge score. And so that's the beginning of the kind of that commercial big scale growth because I can probably, and, and I'll just, I'll just say this. If you had 10 jobs, if you had 10 jobs a year like that, you would hit your oh, goal. It only takes 10. Yeah, for sure. Compared to three, three, 400 driveways and small lots. Yeah. Yeah. Congratulations, man, on, uh, on, on realizing that. And, you know, at the end of the day, this is really a numbers game and, and really having a cult, the culture in the company and having something that you can be proud of every single day that you come to work and, and excited, right? And how, how excited are you to be, a, honestly, straight up, how excited are you at 26 years old to be a business owner that's growing a half a million dollar business? It's really exciting. It's what I set out to do when I started. So I'm happy to see that it's been working so far. I mean, it hasn't been, hasn't gone the ways I've wanted it to all the time, obviously, but uh, I'm happy. Yeah, man, there's definitely ups and downs in every business, but I, I say this, man, I, I, I love when I, I don't do a lot of in, in the field application anymore, but I'll tell you, I have the itch constantly. And so like, I'm going to be using a crack sealing machine next Tuesday just to go out and crack seal. And it's something I'm excited <laughs> about because you know what, man, in, you know, education and, and so many, so many areas have been telling us for, you know, a little bit too long about you know, service-based businesses are not sexy. And I think it's all coming back right now where it's, you know, after this pandemic and things that are going on in the world, it's like, we can actually leave home clean and we can come home dirty with pockets filled with money, be proud of that and live a good life, good truck in our, in our, part, in our driveway, have a nice home and, and build a future that's actually right there rather than just being amongst another person in a call center being owned by a billion dollar corporation that can cut you loose in a matter of seconds. You've taken your destiny into your own hands and you're growing the hell out of your own business. So for that, man, congratulations. And thank, thank you, you so much. Thank you so much for taking the time here with us, man. We really, really appreciate it. I know a lot of people are going to get a lot of value out of this and I'd love to continue to keep in touch. And if there's anything I can do or my team can do for you, we're right here for you. Dude. Great. Thank you very much. Cool. Well, listen, I wish you an incredible, incredible rest of the week. I know probably by this weekend, you'll close a bunch more deals, but um, let's keep in touch. Everybody, thank you so much for tuning in to the Asphalt Kingdom channel. And one last thing for somebody who's wanting to start an asphalt maintenance business, Bob, what would be your number one piece of advice? 
uh, just start. I got a lot of friends that have a lot of ideas and they never start. So I'd, I would say just buy the equipment and go out and do it and you'll figure it out from there. There's enough resources online to answer any of your questions, but it's just getting over the hurdle of starting, I think. Well, congratulations to you, man. Thank you for sharing that advice, Bob. Looking forward to our next one. Take care and crush it, brother. Crush it. Thank you.